A wise man once told me that consistency is the key to excellence, and I want to add one thing to that. It's also the key to failure, complacency, and essentially going broke. In other words, consistency is the key that amplifies whatever reality you're living. So we've talked about bad money habits and how they can leave you broke and sad. But today we're going to talk about something a little different. We're going to talk about someone who consistently, habitually makes decisions that improves their financial future every single day. We're talking about frugal people and their daily habits. Quick disclaimer, for each habit that I give you, I'm also going to give you several different examples so you can really understand how frugal people think. Frugal people are not like most people. They think and act very differently, and it gets to a point where some of the things they do will have people looking at them like they're crazy like, you actually save your money, bro? But that's because frugal people have a set of habits that are so concrete that it gets to a point that those habits are embedded within their identity. For example, frugal people are extremely disciplined and focused within their finances. That means if they go to the grocery store, they are dead set on what they want to get. There's no going to the breakfast style for some cereal and then on the way there, you see a bunch of stuff on sale. Like now you see some maple syrup that's on sale and you see all these other items on sale that you didn't plan on buying anyway, but they somehow make it into your cart. Yeah, that doesn't happen with frugal people, but it takes time to build that discipline to obtain that blind eye to those things. The best way I can describe a frugal person's focus is like this. You know how you might go somewhere like let's say the mall or something and you're there to get something specific. Maybe it's a pair of shoes, maybe it's a suit, maybe it's a jacket, but the bottom line is you're there for a reason, right? And so you walk in there and someone on the other side that you might know, they might see you from a distance and they'll be doing any and everything they can to get your attention. I mean, they're waving, jumping up and down. Hey, Reggie. And you, you so focused on what you're there to get, you're like, man, this is a nice jacket. I'm gonna have to get this. And there, there they are right across from you waving at you and you don't even see them. You might have looked directly at this person, not even realize it because you're focused on the purpose of why you even came to the mall in the first place. Now, if you do that with your friends, that's gonna get you into some trouble with your friends. But if you do that when you're shopping, it'll get you out of trouble with money. That's how a frugal person is. Instead of ignoring people, ignore your temptations. So a frugal person might be at the grocery store to get some eggs and some milk. And then on the way there, there's wine on the cell. And let's say this specific frugal person likes wine and it's a temptation for them to get wine. They're gonna be like, you know what? I didn't come here for all that. I came here for eggs and milk. That's what I'm gonna get and I'm gonna get out of here. They stick to the purpose of them going into that store. I didn't come in here to buy all that. I'm just getting what I have on my list and I'm getting out of here. And y'all know Christmas is coming up. So there's gonna be people out there trying to sell you something, trying to tempt you saying how you need their product and how it's perfect for Christmas. Look, ain't gonna be no buying nothing. A frugal person is gonna cut them off right there and say, no, thank you, I'm good. But it's Christmas. Yep, it sure is. Merry Christmas, have a good day. You're being rude. Ain't, ain't, no, ain't no being rude. I told you no, now you're just wasting my time. So you want my time and my money? You talking crazy. I know you probably just laughed at that, but it's true, this actually happens. It happens every single day. And for those who don't truly understand what it means to be frugal, they're gonna be the first ones to fall into that trap. Me as a frugal person, if I'm walking somewhere and I see that somebody's trying to sell me something, I will go out of my way to look as unapproachable as possible. I'll mean mug the mess out of a situation. I'll be walking looking like this. This one time, somebody even had to hold their boy up. They was like, oh, hold on, wait, don't go up to him. He looks mean. That's right. But anyway, frugal people are like this because they already have their financial future planned out. These are the same guys who are checking their bank accounts every single day. Frugal people always have a financial goal and they know what it's going to take to get there. And based off of that goal, they create a financial plan. And I'm going to tell you this, anything that threatens or slows them down from getting to that goal ain't happening. And that's why a frugal person is going to make sure they find the best deal possible, especially when it comes to big purchases. I told you about the financial mistake I made when I was 21 and I was spending way too much money on rent because I had decided to live in a townhouse with two bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms by myself instead of living in a single bedroom apartment. I could have saved hundreds of dollars a month just simply by living below my means. But no, I didn't do that. So at 23, when I got some sense, I moved to another state. And when I moved to another state, I spent hours and hours just searching the best areas with nice apartments. And I searched until I found a price that I was willing to pay. 
Let me tell you something. My friend who was living out here for a little while swore up and down that if I wanted to live in a nice apartment in a nice area that I would have to pay at least $1,800 a month. And this was for a single bedroom apartment. Look, you done lost your mind if you think I'm going to pay $1,800 for some rent. I ain't paying 18 nothing. As a frugal person, I had it in my mind that I wasn't going to spend a dime over $1,500 a month. So when I started doing my research, I was like, huh, the average rent in this area is about $1,000. So how could it be that you have to pay $1,800 a month to live in a decent place or a nice place or whatever? And because of that suspicion, I looked and looked and looked. I didn't care how long it took. I just looked for hours. I looked for new neighborhoods, old neighborhoods. I didn't really care. I wanted to live in a place that was nice, in a nice, safe area, and I didn't have to pay 18 freaking hundred dollars a month until I found one. And guess what? The results were I found a place in an extremely nice area, very nice place, and I paid $400 less per month than my friend had to pay. I've always been a stubborn person. Ask my mom, she'd be in the comments. I'm an uncompromising person, and so is every other frugal person on this planet. So when I go out with friends and we're just having a general conversation, it doesn't matter if they're making as much as I'm making, or if they're making more than I'm making, or if they're making half of what I'm making, because guess what? Every single time we get to the topic of how much we pay for rent, mine is lower every single time. I didn't compromise, not on quality, not on safety, and definitely not on price. I stuck to my guns. And that's the thing, you gotta know exactly what you want and you have to be determined to get it without accepting any substitutes. But you also have to have realistic expectations. In my case, my expectations were very realistic. I'm gonna tell you this right here, that's when it comes to big purchases that come in the form of recurring bills. This obviously isn't gonna work with every single thing you wanna buy. Some things are gonna be on the expensive side like laptops, vehicles, earbuds, some clothing items like suits or watches. These things are especially gonna be on the expensive side if you want them to last you. That's where the frugal mindset cherishes quality and longevity over saving a quick buck. Like I've bought a lot of technology in my life and my experience and Google both say that the lifespan of an affordable laptop is three to five years. But of course, if you're anything like me and you're about clumsy, you'll mess around and drop the laptop and all of a sudden that three to five years turns into one year. Because at that point, repairing it would cost just as much as buying a brand new one. <sighs> and when I say affordable, I'm talking about laptops like say the Dell Inspiron, you know, laptops that are in between the price range of 250 to $500. I'm willing to pay triple that for a laptop that is one, made of stronger material like say magnesium or aluminum, Two is capable of storing as much data as possible. And three is a powerful machine that allows me to do as much work on it as possible. Especially if it's known to last three times as long as the lower priced laptops. And I'm not just talking about battery life here, I'm also talking about the overall lifespan of the laptop. That's just an example, but if that puts you to sleep, I'm about to wake you up with this. Just because a frugal person is willing to drop more money on something that has better quality and lasts longer than something else does not mean that they spend money that they don't have on it. Frugal people don't do that mess. And spending money that you don't have goes far beyond swiping your credit card on things that you don't need, that you don't even have the money for on your debit card. It goes far beyond that. If you just got paid and you already took care of all your bills, everything's paid for the month, and you have a little bit of money left over for that month, and you still spend it all, literally all of your leftover money on something that you want, you're spending money that you don't have. Why? Because now you don't have any money left over. Pew. Tell me this, what item is so important? What reason do you have that is so important that you should spend the rest of the money that you have for the month that you could potentially use to, I don't know, save or invest or survive on, that you should go and spend money on a new TV, a new pair of shoes, or a new pair of earbuds. You see, that's the problem. So many of us will get paid and we'll let the money that we earn just burn a hole right through our pockets. When I was growing up, my mama always used to tell me, boy, that money is burning a hole in your pocket. My advice to you, calm your little hot pockets down, bro. Hold on to some of it. Look, I'm gonna tell you how frugal I am. And look, this is probably the part of the video that you've all been waiting for because I'm about to show you how I got these AirPods right here 
for zero dollars. And I say zero dollars because I, I literally paid zero dollars for it. And two, some of y'all tried to get smart in the comments on one of my videos where the thumbnail said, I eat for free. And so since some of y'all wanna take stuff literal, I'm gonna make this as literal as possible. So I generally don't buy myself stuff because I just don't like to have a lot of stuff. It's just not me. But I had the regular Apple earbuds at first and the, they were just the regular ones where you plug into your phone. But then my cat got to it and one of the ears went out. And I was pretty upset because they lasted me for a few years and I was like, man, now I'm gonna have to actually go out and buy some more. But then I had a change of heart. Cause I was like, you know what? One of these ears still works. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep using them. That was until I went to the gym with only one earbud working. And then I was like, yeah, this, this ain't gonna work right here. Long story short, I was like, crap, let me go ahead and get some more earbuds. But here's the thing, whenever I do buy myself stuff, I spend as little money out of my own pockets as possible. See, my job has this system where they give you awards in the form of points whenever you do a good job at work. And these points have monetary value, like you can buy items or you can buy gift cards. Well, I had a lot of points that were just sitting in my account that I hadn't even looked at or touched. They've been sitting there for literally months and it ended up being thousands of points we're talking about here. And when you have thousands of points, that equates to hundreds of dollars, right? So I had about $175 worth of gift cards, except you can only get gift cards in $50 increments. So I ended up getting $150 worth of Best Buy gift cards and then I just use the gift cards to buy the AirPods. And usually AirPods go for more than 150, but they were on sale. So my gift cards covered all of it. I even have some money left over on my gift cards. So that's my point. I got the AirPods for free. I was willing to actually spend a little money out of my pocket, like $10 or so, but I didn't even have to do that. And I don't want nobody coming for me in the comments talking about some, well, well Reggie, you technically didn't get them for free. I got them for $0, bro. But obviously this isn't something that everyone just gets to do. The main reason I'm telling you about this is because I'm giving you two things. One, the frugal mindset of getting into a habit of figuring out ways that you can get out of paying out of pocket in full for items that you want. And trust me, there's ways to avoid paying out of pocket in full in legal ways. Like for example, credit cards have points. That, I'm not even gonna get into that, but that's just an example of, of how you can get out of paying out of pocket in full for things that you wanna do, whether it's traveling or buying a pair of AirPods or going out to eat. There's a way to get out of it and I just want you to think about it. And two, I'm expressing to you that I didn't just get all those points sitting around not doing nothing. You get what I'm saying? It takes work and it takes a strong mindset. And those together create experience. And look, I want you to understand something. Anyone can understand the concept of saving money and being frugal, but how many people do you know that struggle with both? Look, let me tell you something. Understanding isn't enough. Why do you think they give high school grads and college grads such a hard time when it comes to hiring after they get out of school? Sure, you may understand the concept of being a bus boy, but do you have any experience being a bus boy? Sure, you understand the concept of being an engineer now that you just got your engineering degree, congratulations, but how many years of experience do you have working as an engineer? Oh, zero? All right, cool, cool. We'll give you uh, $40,000 a year. How's that sound? Look, he was being nice by saying, how does that sound? But look, let me tell you the truth. Ain't no negotiating that. What, what you gonna say? Well, uh, I think I deserve 70. That is the quickest way to get laughed at. You'll have the, the hiring manager taking their glasses off like, 70, wait, wait a minute. We didn't even offer you 50. You, you think you deserve 70? I am perplexed. Look, look, then they'll put their glasses back on. They'll be like, look, son, you have no experience. You're lucky we offered you 40. So yeah, frugal people, are in the trenches all the time. They're always thinking of different ways they can save more money and make better use of the money that they have, whether it's spending money on something that's gonna last them longer. They're always thinking about their financial future, point blank, period. That's just how it is all the time. This is a daily regimen for them. So now that you know about the daily habits of frugal people, and look, I know I could have added like 20 more habits to this, but I didn't want to overwhelm you. I just wanted to give you the main points of what I think are the most important frugal living habits to employ on a daily basis so that you can fully understand the way that frugal people think and the way that they act so that you can apply these things to your life. And that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.